Hi, this is Richard from webinaction.co.uk with a short tutorial on how to restore the contents of a MySQL database, which provides the data for a website, to a default set of records. This is useful for demonstration websites where you want to allow visitors to the site to alter the data temporarily so that they can see how the site works, but you want any changes they make to be undone and the website returned to its original state on a regular basis. An example of where this is done is the demo site at Moodle, demo.moodle.net, where you can log in and make changes to the site, which will be visible to anyone else who logs in, but only for a short period of time. So I'm going to add a new category. I'm going to call that Web Development. Then I'm going to click on Create New Course and add a new course, and I'm going to call that Ajax Development. And at the moment, anyone else who logs into the site will see this new course. In the corner of the browser window, you will see a countdown to the next reset of the database, upon which your changes will be wiped out. If you refresh the page after the hour, you will find that your changes are indeed gone. Another example is the favourite movies site I built for my Udemy course on Ajax development. You can find this at webinaction.co.uk forward slash favourite movies. Just like the Moodle demo site, visitors to this website can alter the data in the database. They can change a particular moviegoer's favourite movies. They can also edit, add or delete moviegoers and movies. but the database will revert back to its original state every hour on the hour. This tutorial shows you how to achieve this using a Linux cron job. To set up a cron job, you need a web host which has cPanel or a similar admin interface, and you need to check before you start that MySQL databases and cron jobs are allowed. If you've been doing my course, you will already have the database set up, and you need to use the database name username and password that you've set up for that. In cPanel or your admin panel, click on MySQL Databases. Under Create New Database, enter a name for the database. The web host will add a prefix to it. You can't change this. We'll name the rest of it Favs and click Create Database. Click Go Back. Scroll down and a bit lower under MySQL Users, Add New User, Add a New Username. I'll use the same name as for the database. And again, the prefix will be added. Now we'll choose a password and I'll copy this into my clipboard using Control C. And I'll paste it into a text file so we don't lose it. Click on Create User. And click Go Back. Finally, under Add User to Database, select the user and the database that we've just made and click Add. And on the next screen, check All Privileges. Click Make Changes, and then go back again. We have now set up an empty database with a username and a password. Now we need to get some sample data into it, which we'll import from an SQL file. If you're viewing this tutorial at webinaction.co.uk, you can find this by clicking on the download button next to the video, saving the zip file to your hard drive, 
and then unzipping it. It contains two text files with SQL extensions. Favs initialize.sql, which we'll use to set up the database on your web host, and Favs default.sql, which we'll use later to restore the default set of data. Go now to your admin panel home and click to get into phpMyAdmin. The database that we've just set up should be listed there on the left. Click on its name to get into it. Click Import at the top of the screen and browse to favsinitialize.sql and click Go. And you should get a success message in green at the top of the screen. Now click on the database, name and then on its tables to check that the data has in fact been successfully imported. Favourites Movies and Moviegoers And you should see sample data in each of them. For our default data set, we'll use a very similar SQL file to the one that we've just used to set up the database, favs default.sql, and we'll use this to override any changes made. Open this up in a code editor and have a look at it. It starts out with three truncate commands truncate table movies, truncate table moviegoers, and truncate table favourites. These delete all the data in the three tables whilst preserving the structure of the tables. And then we have a series of three insert into commands. These insert the data to return the site to its default state. Now you should upload this default SQL file to your home directory, not your web directory, so that it's not publicly accessible. So we'll upload it there first using cPanel's file manager. And we check, and there it is in our home directory. We want the cron job to take this SQL file and use it to overwrite the database in use. In cPanel Home, click on Cron Jobs. Cron tab syntax consists of five settings specifying the time to run the command, followed by the command itself. We'll write the command first. We start out with MySQL because it's a MySQL command, and then we need our connection details. This begins dash u for username, and then the username that we set up appended straight onto that with no space. Then a space, and then dash p for password. And again, we append the password, which we saved in a text file, copy that. And we append that straight onto the dash p, again with no space. Then a space, and then the name of the database. And another space. Then a backpointing arrow. This is going to set the source for the input to the command. And then the path to the SQL file favsdefault.sql that we put in our home directory. Now we need to set up the timing for this. In cPanel, this is done very easily using the graphical user interface, which is nice because it looks a bit daunting at first sight. Let's do it using this cPanel interface first, and then we'll look at the code which has been generated. Go to Common Settings at the top and choose when you want the job to run. This can be anything from every minute to once a year, or you can specify particular hours, days, etc. When we finish the tutorial, we'll set this to run every hour on the hour, but so that we don't have to wait that long to see it working, we'll first set it to run every minute. So set that to every minute and click on Add New Cron Job. The cron job is set. Down below, we can see the syntax generated. 
a series of five options specifying the time to run the job. If there's an asterisk, that option is set to every. If there's a number, it's set to that particular value. So all the five settings have an asterisk, which in order mean every minute, every hour, every day, every month, and every day of the week. So the net result of that is that it will run every minute. Let's check that it works. Go into the database, then into a table, and click on some of the records and make alterations to them. Change them to anything else that you like. Wait a minute and refresh the page. And the default data should be restored. We can easily specify other times. If we want the job to run at 9.30 a.m. every day, we would set the minutes to 30 and the hour to 9. To run every Sunday at 1 p.m., we'd use 0 for the minutes, 13 for the hours, and 0 for the weekday. That's 0 minutes. 13 for 1 p.m., every day of the month, every month of the year, and the last zero is the day of the week, which begins on Sunday. Monday is 1. If you want the job to run every half hour, you would put 0, 30 for the minutes option. You can specify more than one value for each setting by separating them with commas. Let's set it to run on the hour now by putting zero for the minutes and asterisks for all the other settings. One final improvement that we can make is to stop the cron job sending us an email every time it runs, which could rapidly become annoying. You can do this by appending this bit of code onto the end of the command. This redirects standard output to dev null, a special Linux file known jokingly as the black hole, which silently gets rid of any messages we don't want to know about without telling us a thing. This does mean that if the command fails for any reason, we will be blissfully ignorant until we go to our website and find that lots of changes have been made. So that's our cron job set up, and visitors to our website are free to make any changes that they like to the data, and I know that it will be reset from the default file every hour on the hour.